to ratio introduction. Uh, just before we start, uh, just a reminder that there is a notes chart available for this video. Check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so here are some red and blue tiles. Can you split them up so that each group contains the same quantities of reds and blues as the other groups? Well, let's just have a start with um, how many of each there actually are. We can see that currently there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 red ones. So there are 12 red and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blue. Okay, and all I want to do is I just want to group together reds and blues so that there are the same amount in each group that I make. Well, 12 and 6, they're both, um, uh, they're both even numbers, so I might just be able to split them both into two. So if I took six of the red ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I took three of the blue ones, there's one group. And if we have a look in the other one, can I do the same? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, I've got 6 reds and I've got 3 blues. So what I have done there is I've managed to split it up into um, 6 with 3. Okay, and 2 groups of those. But can I do that? Uh, can I do it any, uh, quick, any smaller than that? Well, I'm having a look here and I'm seeing that actually if I bring these ones in the middle together I've also got the same groups each time I've got four with two and four with two and four with two so that works as well but now if I split those apart could I make them even smaller groups well, if I do that make each pile its own separate group well then I've managed to get two reds with one blue in each of the groups. I wouldn't be able to do anything else than that because I've got it to the absolute minimum, I've got one blue in each group. But what it means is I've taken 12 red and six blue and I've managed to get them to the simplest version that I possibly could, which was two red and one blue. Now this is ratio. Ratio is a way of sharing out groups of, of items. And so originally our ratio, and the symbol for that is a little colon, double dot, is 12 to 6. For every 12 red tiles there were, there were 6 blue ones. But that could also be written as a simplified version, 2 to 1. Meaning for every 2 red tiles there were, there was 1 blue. Which is what we've got here. For every 2 red, we have 1 blue. And so what we have done is we have simplified that ratio. So what could we have done to go straight from a ratio of 12 to 6 to a simplified version of 12 to 1? Well, this is very much like with fractions when we try to find um, equivalent fractions and simplifying fractions. We try to find a common factor. What is the common factor between 12 and 6? And we're looking for the highest common factor. So the biggest number, which goes into 12 and 6, is 6. And so I divide the left hand side by 6, I divide the right hand side by 6, and I get my simplified ratio. So let's give that a go in a few examples. We've got to start with the ratio 8 to 10. How could I simplify that ratio? Well the first thing I need to do is find a common factor. What is the common factor of 8 and 10? Well it's 2. And so I'm going to divide 8 by 2, which will give me 4, and we're going to divide 10 by 2, which gives me 5. And so 8 to 10 is the same as the ratio 4 to 5. If I had 15 to 27, I would need to find a common factor. So what is the highest common factor of 15 and 27? Well, the biggest number, which goes into both, is 3. So I'll divide by 3. On both sides, 15 divided by 3 is 5, 27 divided by 3 is 9. We've simplified the ratio. Now ratio can mean a, um, a relationship between three different items. So in this case we had a ratio of 15 to 9 to 2. And again, I need to find a common factor, but it needs to be a common factor of all three 
parts. So what number goes into 15, 9 and 12? Well, in this case, it's going to be 3. I'm going to divide by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that will be a ratio of 5 to 3 to 4. And finally, 16 to 40 to 24. What number goes into 16, 40 and 24? Well, there are quite a few, um, but let's just take the uh, clear and obvious ones to start with. Um, all of these numbers are even, so we could half all of the numbers. Half of 16 is 8, half of 40 is 20, and half of 24 is 12. But at this point, those numbers can still be simplified further. Because what number goes into 8 and 20 and 12? Well, they're all even. So we could go with 2 again. Half of 8 is 4. Half of 20 is 10. Half of 12 is 6. But still, even further. The number that goes into 4, 10 and 6 is 2 again. So we could divide by 2 again. We get 2 and 5 and 3. And so the, uh, the simplified version is 2 to 5 to 3. Could we have done that a little bit quicker? Well, yes. In each case, if we divided by 8 at the very start, we would have gotten to the final answer in one step. Uh, but that's because 8 is the highest common factor of 16, 40 and 24. Next, I'd just like to have a look at the relationship between um, ratio and things like fractions and percentages. They are all ways of showing proportions of amounts. Um, and so in this case, we've been told that two fifths of the sweets in a bag are cola flavor and the rest are orange. What is the ratio of cola sweets to orange sweets? Well, the first thing I will be doing here, and it's something I do in most questions to do with ratio, is draw myself a bar. And this bar I have split into five pieces because the question was about fifths. And so each of these pieces is one fifth. And it said that two fifths of them were cola. And so two of those pieces represent cola. The rest of them were orange. And therefore, the rest of the bar are the orange sweets. What is the ratio of cola sweets to orange sweets? Well, to write it as a ratio, we just need to think about how many parts we are dealing with. There are two colas to three orange. And it's very important here that we take the correct order as well. It does say cola to orange. Um, and so cola must come first and then orange, two to three. The ratio of cats to dogs visiting a vet one day is three to five. What fraction of visiting pets is dogs? Well, again, I want to draw myself a little bar, this time involving the three for cats and the five for dogs. So three blocks for cats, five blocks for dogs. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those two things together because I want to make a single bar. And all I want to do is then think if the three were for cats, well, that is cat, 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 dog, 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 dog. It says what fraction are dogs? Well, how many blocks have we got in total? We have eight blocks. And so it's going to be out of eight. How many of them are dogs? Well, there are five. And so my fraction will be five eighths. And lastly, 40% of supporters at a rugby match are children. The rest are adults. Write down the ratio of adults to children at the match. Now, this time, what I'm going to do is I'm uh, looking at percentages. Now, because this is a 40%, that's a multiple of 10. So what I've actually done is I've drawn my bar as 10 equal pieces. And what that means is that every block is 10%. And that's every block in there. And so the 40%, well, that would be these first four blocks. And they would be the children. In terms of the adults, they would have to take up the rest. And so we had 10% of the uh, supporters were children. And we had then six blocks. So that is 60%. 
who are adults. If I want to write this as a ratio, well, I could use the actual percentages. It would be 40 to 60. But also, what this does is it allows us to use the diagram. If I just use the blocks, well, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it would be 4 to 6. But, and I've just made a mistake whilst re uh, doing this, I haven't read the question carefully enough. Write down the ratio of adults to children. And so actually I need to reverse this ratio. The answer should actually be 6 to 4. Um, because that is adults and that is children. But also 6 to 4 is not the simplest form. I can cancel that down again to 3 to 2. And so for every two children that went to the match, three adults attended. And so finally, we're coming to uh, the question, write the following in the form 1 to N. Now, all this means is 1 to a number. Um, and it's basically, it's something called the unitary method. It's saying, if I have one of the first item, how many of the second item will I need? Now, in most cases, these are not going to be nice values. These are going to be something that we're going to uh, either uh, leave as a fraction or we're going to use a calculator to get the decimal version. Um, because if I want to get 2 to 5 as a ratio of 1 to n, well, the first thing is I know that the first part of my ratio must be 1. And so what have I done to simplify that? Well, to get from 2 to 1, I've divided by 2. And so I also have to do that on the other side. 5 divided by 2. Well, if I half 5, I get 2.5. And so my first ratio will be 1 to 2.5. In the second question, I've got 5 to 12. Now, again, I know that in my simplified version, I want it to be 1 to something. And so all I've done is I've divided by 5. Now, I have to do that on both sides. So I need to do 12 divided by 5. Now, you may know uh, a quick trick for dividing by 5, um, and that is uh, double it and divide by 10. So if I double it, it's 24, but divide by 10 will be 2.4. But then we come to 3 to 8. Now, I know that I need to make that into a ratio starting with 1. So I would have to divide by 3. The problem with dividing by 3, it will make a recurring decimal. Um, because that is the case, I'm actually just going to leave this one as a fraction. 8 over 3. It's correct. 1 to 8 over 3 is a perfectly acceptable answer. If you wanted to, you could type that into a calculator and just um, find um, the decimal version. Um, but 8 over 3 is fine. Um, in 0 0.5 to 9... Again, I know I need to make this a ratio starting with 1. So what would I have to do to turn 0 0.5 into 1? Well, in this case, I'm actually multiplying. I'm multiplying by 2. And so the same would have to happen on the right-hand side. 9 would also have to multiply by 2, and it would give me 18. For 10 to 33, well, I need to make it 1 to something. So I need to divide by 10. So I need to divide 33 by 10 as well. 33 divided by 10 is 3.3. And then finally, 124 to 250. Now this one, again, we need to get it to a ratio of 1 to something. And so I'm going to have to just divide by that first number, 124. And so on this side, I will also do the same, which gives me 250 over 124. Not the nicest of answers. But I also need to just be careful here. This is something which could be simplified. Because 250 and 124, well, they could both be divided by 2 to give me 125 over 62. And if we really wanted to, we could write this as a mixed number. That would be 1, 2, 2, and 1 over 62. And so finally, we come to our exam question, and it's the Edexcel paper, November 2018, Foundation Paper 1. And what we've been told is that Asmol, Ryan and Kim each played a game. Asmol's score was four times Ryan's score. Kim's score was half of Asmol's score. 
write down the ratio of Asmo's score to Ryan's score to Kim's score. Now this is a really difficult question given that we don't actually know any of their original scores. But we can make it really, really easy if we just think about those bars that we were drawn earlier on. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this very first piece of information. Asmo's score was four times Ryan's score. So let's just draw a block for Ryan's score. Now Asmol's was four times that. And so Asmol must have one, two, three, four blocks. So all of those are Asmol. And then Kim's score was half of Asmol's. Well, that means if Asmol had four blocks, then Kim must have had two. And so if I want to write down a ratio now, all I need to use are these numbers. It wants Asmol to Ryan to Kim. So that is A to R to K. Well, A had four blocks. R had one block. K had two blocks. And we've managed to do the ratio without knowing any of the scores they actually achieved.